listen, I, I, I really thought that like she wouldn't catch cancer again. I, I thought it was gone the first time. Um, mm -hmm. It was uterine cancer. So the second time when she got mm -hmm. it, we were like, well, she was like, I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting. And we were with her, mm -hmm. went to her radiation appointments, brain therapy, all that good stuff. And it wasn't until, um, you know, I, I remember being in those moments with her and I was, she started doing some things where it was like, you know, she was like, I got to pay this. I got to pay that. I got to pay this. And she was doing different things mm -hmm. around the house. And I was like, why, why the rush? Like, we're fine. Yeah. We have time. And in that very same weekend, you know, uh, those were the, the last times she was able to voice something to us. And then she passed the very next week. Listen, grief doesn't have to be grim. That's why when I talk about it on this podcast, it's about dealing with grief and loss in a way that influences the changes you want to make in your life. As you heal, what do you want to do next? Make a professional pivot, end a toxic relationship or friendship? I want you to have the confidence to navigate change. These are real stories from my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions and my inspiring interviews with change makers. I'm Marcia Cork, the change coach, and this is Ooh, Those Effin' C Words. MCs, welcome back. I am Marcia Cork, the change coach. Welcome to another episode of Ooh, Those Effin' C Words. Now listen, I don't know for sure, but I think I might have been set up. OK, <laughs> I think today's guest tried to throw me off my interview game to see if I would rise to the occasion. <laughs> we had a minor scheduling snafu, which made yes. me have to seize the moment and catch her while she was she was available. But I could not be more excited. I am here today with Tiffany Lady T. Watson. All right. Yay. Yeah. If you're in the DMV area, then you know that Lady T truly brings all of the charm to the Charm City and surrounding areas. She is an Emmy nominated TV host, on air talent at Fox 45. We tune into Fox 45's Be More Lifestyle for Lady T's Spilling the Tea with Lady T. <laughs> and let me tell you, she has also been featured on Hot 99.5's The Kane Show and on TMZ Live as a guest contributor. And now Lady T is in the hot seat. Yeah. What up, what up, what up, what up? Hey. yeah, the interviewer is becoming the interviewee today. I love it. I, know. <laughs> I like this. I'm like, this is different. I'm usually the one asking the questions and I'm like, this is fun. Hey. Yeah, and I want to keep it fun. I want it to be conversational. I like these okay. conversations. I like it to be just that. I don't yeah. want it to feel like Q&A. OK, of course, of so course. The one thing I try to do is have them kind of take a past, present, future kind of format. So Ooh. I did. Yeah, I did. You know, share some 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 questions, some topics to kind of drive the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just going to pepper those in. So I really sure. want you to just take the lead in the conversation. Um, I like to start with any life changing moments, life events, any trials, mm -hmm. hardships um, that may have shaped who you are who may, mm -hmm. may have shaped your personality, shaped the work that you do today. So I want to start there. Tell us a, a bit about Lady T, Little Lady T, growing little up. Little Lady T? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Girl, I was a fireball when I was younger. So it was, okay. this is definitely, first of all, let me just say I'm honored to be here. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I know we have a mutual connection. Uh, mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's good to finally like see you, like, you know, hopefully we can meet face to face eventually. But yes, I would love this to, is yeah. such an honor. Um, but yes, no, Little Lady T was a fireball. Little Lady T um, was always cracking jokes and she used to uh, walk her pretend dog and carry a purse. <laughs> Not a pretend um, dog. <laughs> little, li listen, it wasn't even real. It wasn't even a real dog. <laughs> Stop. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So how old were you? Listen, every I was I think it's they said it started when I was like maybe four or five, uh -huh. four or five years old. And I okay. just I did this crazy stuff. I just used to I used to pretend I had a microphone in my hand. I used to have I used to do I that. used to be interviewing my teddy bears. Mm -hmm. I would walk this pretend dog and with my purse and pretend I'm taking the train and just looking fabulous. Like love it. I don't know 
who I thought I was when I was younger, but like my family always says that I was clearly destined to be somebody like amazing, somebody great. And, um, and you know, they always saw me as this star. So that was Mm -hmm. one thing I remember as my, you know, from a child, uh, perspective. I grew up in New York. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Queens. Uh, yeah. So I grew up in New York. I grew up in Queens and I used to, I went back and forth between my, 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 me and my parents' house and my aunt Mm -hmm. in Harlem. So shout out to Queens of Harlem. Hey. So, (laughs) so I, you know, um, honestly broadcast, I feel like shaped my life. You know, like I Mm -hmm. used to listen to the radio a lot when I was younger and I used to love, I used to love listening to Angie Martinez on like, uh, how to seven funk master mm-hmm. flex. I used to love listening to just radio. And then yeah. I was like, I, I loved watching Oprah. So my mom was an okay. Oprah fan, like die hard, like four o'clock every day. Every day. Uh-huh. It, like whether you had homework or not, my mom was like, turn that TV on to mm-hmm. Oprah. Put on my own, put on the O. The O. o. <laughs> <laughs> it was so like my mom loved, love, 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 love. Like she loved Oprah. So mm-hmm. I grew up on that. So it's like, I feel like broadcast surrounded me. So yeah. basically what shaped me, I have to say, is partially my mom, you know, God rest her soul. Um, you know, she died a year and a half ago to um, mm-hmm. uterine cancer. And okay. that woman shaped me though. She shaped me to be like who I am today. Um, you know, she was always at everything. When I opened for, for Kev on stage, she was front and center recording it. Mm-hmm. Um, when I changed my major, oh Lord, she was mad. I, I was doing a uh, law and then I switched to communications and I didn't tell her for like a, like maybe a year or two. Cause I knew she was going, she was, my mom is West Indian. They're West Indian. They've got, oh, okay. Guyana's. Okay. Uh-huh. They've got in South America. So, okay. you know, West Indian and Caribbean people don't play. So yeah. You know, she was really mad when I changed my major, but I started to excel. So she was like, oh, okay, cool. Okay. Um, my mom had, she, she was like, oh, It's okay, always cool. good when it turns out right. Listen, <laughs> it's always when it turns out good, right? She threatened to stop paying my student loans. She was like, I want my name off of this student loan. My mom was, you know, she was a, she was feisty. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the woman shaped me to be who I am today. She's been there every step of the way. And I have to say that was a major life-changing event for me when I lost her. Mm-hmm. Cause she was my number one fan, you know, and it was kind of like, how do I keep going, you know, without her, you know, it was like, even in her last days, I had to host, um, the Be More Lifestyle show. And they said that she was so responsive in the hospital whenever I would pop on the screen. Yes. You know, and it made me feel good. And I was like, dang, like, so she really shaped me to be who I am today. And I think that was a life-changing event when I lost her. Cause it was like, Mm-hmm. okay can I give up now but uh, even in spirit I feel like she still push pushes me a lot so yeah. um I can't really give up <laughs> yeah I gotta keep going and stay stay the course I gotta stay the path so you hear that voice in your ear constantly right yes I hear the voice <laughs> in my ear and she is very feisty still in spirit and she's just yeah. like you you better keep going she you came this far yeah. it's too late to give up now at this point <laughs> like she's just like no Say the say the course. So I love you know she you know she still encourages me even in spirit. So you know that was definitely a life changing event. So yeah, and now I get to be here with you. So yeah, <laughs> I love that. I love that. So tell me more. So we're, mm-hmm. uh, focusing on your childhood still, seeing <laughs> that in your personality, seeing you walking this dog, seeing you carrying your purse, you know, creating these imaginary characters, Girl, the probably yeah. imaginary interviews and everything. So did she at least see the potential in it? And, you know, you made the decision later to pursue a career in entertainment or communications, but did mm-hmm. she nurture it growing up or did the so people she around was like, you nurture it? No, you got to do, no. Because like, with, you know, with Caribbean and West Indian parents, they really want you to be doctors and lawyers yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. or just anything in healthcare. <laughs> doctors, <laughs> lawyers, anything in healthcare. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the focus. So my sister was supposed to be in um, healthcare. She was supposed to be a nurse. My sister, she's older than me and she changed her major from being a nurse to a teacher. Um, so that was a girl. That's where we initially had messed up. This okay? coming from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so she did that. And then I had the nerve to switch my major. So it was yeah. like, uh, yeah. So no, she was like, absolutely not. You are not going to be doing anything with this. And I said, but I really, I really wanted to, mm-hmm. I thought I was going to be a radio host. I thought I was going to be, um, Quicksilver and Angie Ange. I thought mm-hmm. I was going to be, um, Russ Parr. Oh my God. 
I look mm-hmm. up I look up to Russ mm-hmm. Carr. I love him on 92 point nine. Now he's on 102, 102 3 or uh, mm-hmm. 103 5. But yes, oh my gosh, Russ Carr Morning Show. I thought I was gonna be like a radio host. I thought I was gonna yeah. be Donnie Simpson. But my mom was like, no, stick to the law. And <laughs> So she was like, no, but it wasn't until I changed my major, I started doing better. That's when she was like, oh, I can see this seriously. Uh I can see you doing this. Mm -hmm. Like, this, you're for real. Like, Mm -hmm. I told her, I said, this is my dream. This is my destiny. I never forget. I kept having dreams in my head of what I looked like. I was sitting on a couch and I was hosting a show and Mm -hmm. I kept having these dreams and I kept telling her and and I was like, I think that's the way I'm supposed to be going. Like, I I kept Mm -hmm. telling her and she was just like, uh, stick to law. It's guaranteed. And, you know, Caribbean parents always tell you, you need a guaranteed job. Got you. Got you. <laughs> so there was nothing I could so do. who nurtured that for you then? It has to come from somewhere to stay my the place. auntie. Stay that the was, auntie. Girl, okay. it was okay. auntie. My aunt is a pastor. Okay. And whatever my mom was saying, my aunt came in on the slide and was like, if God has that mm-hmm. for you, it's mm-hmm. for you. So my auntie nurtured it. She said, mm. so she was, she was basically in the background, just telling me, keep going, keep yeah. going, keep going. You know, she'll see, she'll see. And then yeah. um, to eventually have both of them on my side, you know, that yeah. was great, you know, cause, <laughs> but auntie was the one who, you know, she definitely like was the one who constantly like, she nurtured it. She yeah. was like, I see it. I'm be like, hey, I'm like, auntie, I had this dream. And I saw, she said, that's it. She mm-hmm. said, God's talking to you. And she would just continuously just like, she nurtured it, I have to say. And then people I met, like, you know, I've, I've had um, just encouraging people in my life. I've had Shardell Moore, the previous host of our lifestyle show. She was like, I see great things in, in your future. She was like, here's what you're going to do. And every step she gave me, I followed. Mm-hmm. I think that was something, that was 2015 when I met her. Okay. And she was like, I, I feel like I know you. And I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know why we feel like that, but I feel like there's a connection here. And mm-hmm. since then, every step she's telling me to do, anything I, she's, anything she's, any task she's giving me, she like I just do it, and and, she, and and I get I get a blessing out of it. Like yeah. literally, something good comes out of it. Opportunity, and she's just like I'm telling you, I feel like I know where you're going. I see where God is taking you. She's a look. I've had some people in my life. It's good to keep those folks, those folks in your life who believe in you. Absolutely. They're like, I see the potential. I see where you're Absolutely. going. I see it. So I'm sticking with it. So yeah, it's, those exactly. Have had. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and and that's that's specifically why I ask because we are very late to the game of mentorship, mm-hmm. right? Yes. <laughs> you know the importance. Not until so much later in our lives, the value yeah. in having a mentor, having someone who does the work that you want to do, mm-hmm. is already in the circles you want to be in. Yes. Someone who's gonna, as I, as I've been saying, mention your name when you're not in the room. You know, mm-hmm. we need those people. So it's great that you had someone, mm-hmm. um, if, not, if not in childhood, but it's early enough in your life to help yep. you set the course and help mm-hmm. have charter that territory it helps it helps you just it helps you as you're growing too yeah uh, you know when when you're being shown certain things and you're like i can i can see where i'm going yeah and it's like when someone when you tell someone that and they believe you it just makes you feel like you can do elevated right yeah i feel like i can tackle anything i feel like i can do anything i feel like i'm built for this like you ever felt like that like i was like oh i can do this i can do this i mean i remember telling my best friend one time and i was like I can feel in my veins that like something great is about to happen for me, but mm-hmm. I can't, I couldn't tell what it was. And, mm-hmm. and she was like, I always think back to that day. She was like, you're literally doing everything you said you were wow. going to do. And so living that out, I, it's, it's, it's a blessing living that out every single day. Honestly, it's just a blessing, yeah. <laughs> but they, but they all knew they were like, you're so funny. You're hilarious. Like, I wish you could do something with this, but we don't know what, mm-hmm. like, you know, it was just Did teachers nurture that in school. Yeah. Did oh, any, any teachers nurture that in my professors? I would say, but okay, mm, but not in the professors. They did. You know, one. It was the reason I changed my major was because I met this counselor um, at Bowie State University. I went to Bowie State University, okay. which is like right here in Maryland. Um, yeah. HBCU. Okay, I'm I'm you. I want to get caught up. Let me stop. <laughs> I got two um, years at HBU. Too strong. Come on now. Look, we survived. Look, we survived. We survived the 
HBCU. Okay, let me yeah. stop. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I met this. You're going to think this is crazy, but I always tell this story because there was this. Well, so it was mandatory in um, Bowie State for you to meet a um, meet with a counselor. Okay. And the counselor is supposed to, in your freshman year, you're supposed to be advised during your freshman seminar class yeah. as to like what, what you're going to do. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. You have to be advised as to what you're going to do. So in addition to having an advisor, they were like, you need to go see this counselor. And I was like, oh, this is stupid. But I, <laughs> so I still went. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was this, I remember she had this huge red sweater on. It was a black woman and she had this short wig on and she had like a long jean skirt. And she let me know about myself. I mm. was telling her what I'm going to do because I felt like it was a waste of time to be there. I was like, sis, I'm majoring in law. I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to make sure I become a lawyer. And she mm-hmm. started asking me questions like, well, what part of law are you going to study? And I was like, oh, I don't know. No like, <laughs> uh-huh. I was like, I don't know. And she was like, okay. She was like, do you know like what part of it you are focused on? And I was like, there's different parts. Like I didn't, girl, I <laughs> sit lay me out. I was so embarrassed. I really didn't know a lot about law, but I just mm-hmm. knew I had to take it and focus on it. Right. And she was like, why are you taking this? Like, why are you, why is this your major? And I was like, oh, cause my mom said so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she was mm-hmm. like, that is not the way to go with this. She was like, is your mom going to be taking your courses for you? And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. you, you want to tell her that? Because mm-hmm. apparently <laughs> this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And she was like, what do you really want to do? I said, ma'am, I thought I was going to be a radio host. I thought I was going to be the best thing that's ever hit media. And I, I was like, but my mom said it's not a guaranteed job, so I should stick mm-hmm. with this. And mm-hmm. she was like, your mom is not going to be the one to be taking these courses. Your mom isn't going to be the one that has to live your life specifically. She yeah. was like, so you need to make a decision. She was like, if you want to do communications and broadcast journalism, you need to focus on that. And she was like, you need to go switch your major right now. And mm-hmm. and I was like, okay. And she told me she was, she just was straight up with me. It's not what you want to do. So don't do that. Mm. And, um, I don't know. She laid me out. I felt like, but it was a life changing experience because I yeah. literally went and changed my major that day. Wow! Like, I changed my major that day by like four o'clock. I had met the communications director. Like I heard, I was I had switched my major, and that's why I didn't tell anybody for like maybe a year and a half and two years. A I didn't want to get a Okay, I didn't so tell are- them. I told my aunt. I told the rest of my family knew, and they were waiting for the ball to drop. They were like, "When are you gonna tell your mom?" Like, oh my goodness! This is major. My mom was like, "Girl, she was mad." She was. Like, <laughs> I mean, you gotta show report cards. <laughs> I had. Oh, I was getting great. I was getting better grades. I could say, like, she was like, "Oh my gosh, Dean's list again," but she didn't know it was because. I had changed. <laughs> okay. so she's not analyzing the report card. She's not looking at the yeah, courses you're taking. Just like, oh, this is amazing. Okay. Like, you're doing okay. so well. Wow. It was so embarrassing. But I was like, and everybody in my family knew. They were like, oh, when are you going to tell her? Blah, blah, blah. So I finally, when I told her, I, she was just like, she was so sad and disappointed. But mm-hmm. that counselor, like, really... I, don't, I, I can't find her. And the weirdest I'm going to ask you, do you know where she is? I, I don't know where she is. Um. I, after that one day, I ain't, seen, I ain't seen sis since. Oh, my goodness. That's why I say it's a crazy story. I don't know what to, I, do, I don't know. That's the, uh, don't that's the angel that appears in the Lifetime movie and changes the course of your life. Right. And I'm like, she was, she, I promise you, I saw her. She signed my paper. So I know that she was real and existed, uh-huh. but I could not find her again ever since then. And I always tell the story because I'm just like, one day I would like to find her. I do not know who she was, but shout out to whatever counselor that was 20, that was like 20, that was 2007, Bowie State University, um, freshman seminar and sis changed my life because I changed my major that very day that she told me to. So I wish I could find her one day to thank her, but yeah, it's changed my life ever since. (laughs) I oh, yeah. love that story. That uh-huh. was that was amazing. What did they I call? Know. It's weird. I try not to weird people out with it, but she's yeah. really the reason why I did this. I was yeah. like, man, it's the, it's on the tip of my tongue. What do they call it? You know, the Morgan Freemans in the movie, the black man, yes. the black mysterious. You know, the I can't remember what they call it, but it's that. Yes. It's, it's like that, a, that a person that something mystical, exactly. They appear at the right time. Yes. They give you guidance and wisdom, and they, they disappear. 
and then disappear. Yeah. I really tried looking for her while I was yeah. at campus and I was about to graduate. I was looking for her and I could not find her because I went on to um, get an internship at High Day Five and Kane, you know, God rest his soul too. Kane let me on air. Um, he let me do a segment on air. It was just, I had jumped off to doing so many different things and yeah. like, I don't know, it just, it jump started my career there. So I was really hoping to find her to tell her this, but I can't yeah. find her. <laughs> yeah. I interviewed, um, Jay Phoenix, a music producer a couple of weeks hey. ago. And he said the say he said that he went back to Duke Ellington to make oh. sure that he told, he told the teacher that told him he would have a career in music. Cause I think he pursued IT or something outside. Yes. Of it. Mm -hmm. But he remembers the conversation with that instructor and said, mm -hmm. you're going to be in music. You should be doing music. So went it's back those to people that who flower. know and they know yeah. you so well. They're like, I can see your gifts. Yeah. I wish you see it too. And it's like, you're, you're just, your, your mind is focused on the wrong thing. So right. I think man. they see, themselves in you they see themselves when they were younger yes. and they see that, that same drive that same passion and enthusiasm in you and want to get you on track before yeah. you bear off course it's yeah. true it's yeah. true I mm -hmm. I think my focus when I was younger was I'm really good at like English and language arts so my focus was I even wrote I wrote like a, a book for my class that my teacher was super impressed with and mm -hmm. it was <laughs> and everybody was like I can't believe you wrote this but it was like just it was like just a girl playing and she just, um, the devil popped out on her mm -hmm. and he kept trying to make her do bad things. And then she mm -hmm. was like, nope, I don't want to. So I'm throwing him back down in this, uh, <laughs> in this sewage hole that he came out of. Uh -huh. And like, and it was just like the most hilarious story. And I was like, oh yeah, so maybe I have a future in English. And uh -huh. they were like English and law. So people try to put you in a box of what yeah. you think you're good at. Just Absolutely. you can be good at multiple things, but mm -hmm. yeah, don't let people put you in a box. Yeah, that's yeah. what I learned. And I guess it's, I guess it's with good intentions. They it want to is. on the path to success. Mm -hmm. and but it just, just it's not what it's it's not for you. If it's right. and you know it and you know it, but you're just going along with it. Right, right. <laughs> that's the worst part. We go along with it, like it's gonna work. It's not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So the, the career choice. So that so that happened much later. You, oh, yeah, you leaned into it in college with mm -hmm. the um, you know, yeah. support and encourage of this mysterious fictional creature. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this angel. I'm like, this angel that appeared yes. from out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And then so you mentioned a few internships, some really great internships. And although yeah. your career is somewhat unconventional. There are a lot of people that go into communications and have their sights set on mm -hmm. this type of career, you know, in entertainment. Oh, right. Um, so walk us through the process of actually being able to secure these really good internships, the relationships oh, that you girl. have to form. It was rough. College. It is okay. not easy. It Talk is not that. easy. It is rough. And when I do, um, usually the Capital Emmys, they have this NATAS and they, you, you get to talk to different journalists who are up and coming or mm -hmm. who are just starting off. And I, I I'm very real with them when I have these conversations with them. And I just want to let people know that I didn't, I didn't take the, the normal route or whatever okay. it is you're supposed to do. Okay. I was all over the place. Like I literally was just, um, let me see. I got the Hot Night Five internship and that was first semester. And I, would, I was helping Kane show and Sarah show. And I still shout out to Sarah Fraser. I still, I still follow her. She's doing amazing. Um, but <laughs> you know, I had that and I was, um, doing that internship and then it was like okay well, what's next mm -hmm. and then it was like okay now you're supposed to apply for jobs so I was applying for jobs and I was like man I can't get anything I was I mean I was desperately every day I woke up I was job hunting 8 to 5 p.m mm -hmm. it was like a job job hunting and what job. type of jobs are you looking for and so at that point in time I was looking for anything in radio TV and okay. and because I only as a had personality a, as a producer as anything. a writer anything. I was like come okay. on hire a sister I did all of these things I'm well known I'm lady T I'm like mm -hmm. and then it's like mm, we're good I just wasn't hearing mm -hmm. back and then I was like I don't know what I'm supposed to do I thought I had this in the bag I, you know I was built yeah. up I was like oh this is great but then um, I ended up going back to school and I ended up going to Full Sail University, okay. which is in Winter Park, Florida. I did that online. Mm -hmm. And boy, did they whip me into journalism shape. Okay. Like it was, it was a one year program. They sent you a video camera and like you had to cover different stories. 
every single week. Like every week okay. we were covering a new story. It was crazy. And did, were um, you responsible for finding your own story as well? And you had to pitch, you had to pitch like what story you wanted to do. Okay. Um, but also they were like, oh yeah, this sounds good. Like pursue that. And okay. you would have to turn it in by Sunday night, 11.59 PM. Sometimes it'd be Monday. Um, but mm -hmm. they were very strict because they sent you the equipment. So it's not like you can't do it. Yeah. They sent you the equipment. They sent us a Sony HD camera, a MacBook computer. They said, does everything you need in this launch box? And okay. you're like, okay. They taught me how to edit video. They taught me how to do so much with mm -hmm. this school. And they literally like find an event to cover, find mm -hmm. an important person to cover. There was like several stories that really stuck out to me. And I realized that like, I was like, oh, I like this. I could really like, I could really do this. And okay. then I was like, okay, now that I've gotten like, I was valedictorian. I was also advanced achiever. Awesome. I got the advanced achiever award, which is the award where they feel like this person is really going to make it. And you're the standout okay. in your class. Okay. So I got valedictorian, I got advanced achiever award. I'm like, come on, after this, I should be good. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. After that, I was like, man, I still can't find a job. I was, I mean, I was trying to go after like radio host jobs. I was going after just board operator jobs. I was going the simplest things. Then wow. I was like, you know what? Forget it. Let me try patient registration at this local hospital. Oh my god. <laughs> well, look, I was like, we're you were about to be in the healthcare industry. <laughs> I was like, they like all the that. I answer a phone. Look, I use my phone. I was desperate. My mom yeah. was getting frustrated. She was like, yeah. what is happening? Like, why are you just not? And I was like, I know I'm trying. Yeah. It was difficult, but um, I, it was so hard to find a job. And I ended up becoming a freelance reporter for um, a local newspaper. $35 okay. per story. $15 if I took a photo. Wow. Girl, I wasn't making nothing. Because all that mm -hmm. together is just basically $50 a story in total. Yeah. And that was like, I, I, I learned so much doing that. I think I went on a tour with uh, Stenny Hoyer, you know, our Chris person. I went on a tour with him on the Weather Center at University of Maryland. I was, I was with you. I was doing a lot of different stories and I really liked it. You know, I was, um, I just wasn't making enough money from it. Yeah. Um, but I had to take, I was taking anything I could get at that point just to, jump start me on my career and, and what do you think it is what do you think it is that makes breaking in so hard it's tough because they want you to have the experience already and it's like wait i'm coming to you for the experience exactly that's gonna say but how do you get the experience how do i get the experience yeah. and and you know what i had to be willing to be like i had to work my way up and i had to be willing to be like okay i'm gonna work my way up because i yeah. know this is just a starting point that's it yeah. it's just a starting point and um, I'm gonna get to where I need to get to. Okay. Um, but it was rough because I, I mean, imagine making. I was only I only started off doing like two stories a week, so I was only making like a hundred dollars like a week, yeah. and then like that was rough. Those are rough times. And I this isn't really... uncommon. I've heard this before. In, you heard in, that? In, okay. Yeah, in in this industry for sure, because they know everyone, it's very competitive. Everyone yes. is trying to get these, these, these jobs, these internships. And, and so they're willing. Experience that can, yeah. are getting ahead of you. There's yeah. people with more experience who are ahead of you. There's people with. And willing to work for free, even yes. with that experience. They're willing to work for free. They have somebody yeah. taking care of them they you know they're like and i have my, my parents were technically like they were like look we'll help you but right now mm -hmm. we need you to get a job your focus needs to be job 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 okay uh -huh. yeah. so i you know i started off in the pg central newspaper and they were giving me fifty dollars a story and that was a little rough and I, <laughs> but it was good i i enjoyed mm -hmm. my beat i was a features reporter and i did town what is it town like i did a boot uh, i covered Bowie City Government. Okay. So I did features, Bowie City Government. And then I got another job at a different newspaper, a bigger newspaper. Mm -hmm. And then um, I would cover features and I would cover local town government for Indian Head, um, okay. where they had like the first youngest mayor like ever. Um, so I got to work with him um, okay. and, uh, and La Plata. And they gave me a plaque. They gave me a plaque when I, you know, because they were like, look, we were not getting coverage and now all of a sudden wow. you get coverage. <laughs> they were like 
we would never be on the front page. This is the first time like we've ever dealt with this. And I, I, mm-hmm. I opened a lot of doors, you know, in regards to them. So it was yeah. it was fun. I, I got to do that. I got paid a little bit more. A little okay. more. 30000 Okay. Right Still and a plaque. Right. And a Still plaque. Right. <laughs> so not balling. Um, but while I was working there, I started commenting on TMZ Live because okay. TMZ slid in my DMs and was like, hey, can you comment on our show today? And I was like, oh, yes. Yeah. But they do that for everybody. Like they just they're looking for people to comment. So it's great. Um, I was on at first every single week. I was once a week, <laughs> once a week, every week I was on. Okay. Then I was like, okay, let's slow it down. Let's do once a month, once or twice a month, once by phone, once by video. And it was mm-hmm. free. It wasn't, I wasn't getting paid for it. Or anything. Hey, give me the timeline for this. At what point are you working for, uh, working in La Plata and then uh, oh, kind of discovered? This is all at the same time. So okay. I don't know if I was on crack or like what <laughs> drug I was on. I can't even tell you that. I myself yeah. don't understand what I was doing. I don't get it. I was working for Southern Maryland newspapers uh-huh. as a reporter okay. doing features and covering La Plata and Indian Head stuff. Um, but then I was also commenting on TMZ Live like once every other week. Mm-hmm. And then I worked for a blog, uh, I worked for a blog, The Bobby Pin. Um, she's okay. like a national producer now. I was I was going to different movie of movie like premieres and critiquing it for her. Okay. So I was doing that. That's what I I don't know what drug I was on. Like, I really don't know. I think I was hungry for it. Hungry. Yeah. I was hungry for it. And I said, nothing is going to stop my shine. Like I was, I was, when I tell you I wanted it so badly, I wanted it so badly. And I was like, nothing is going to stop me. So that's why I was like, my hand needs to be, in every single thing. Then, in addition to those things, you're going to be mad, but I was doing two radio shows. <laughs> one on Saturday, one on Friday night. And it was like, one was pre-recorded, one was live. Wow. And I I remember, I, I think I did sleep during these times, but I don't remember actually if I was sleeping. I don't remember. I was just so hungry. I wanted yeah. it badly. And and people around you are hungry too. And they want it more than exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. So you you have to really like you had I had to step my game up. And then and where are you living? Because you've given me places <laughs> all across the DMV area. <laughs> she said, What are you? you How did you get girl? And these were all some of these were free. And I the rest of the stuff was like the only thing that was actually paying me was the 30,000 a year job, my, mm. my, my uh, reporting job. And like, I was just, I was living at, I'm living at home. I'm living at home okay. with my parents. I think I'm, you know, I'm like, okay, this is good. And they're just like, wow, you are hustling. Like you're yeah. hustling, you're grinding. Um, but the only thing I think they were worried about my sleeping. I think I wasn't sleeping yeah. as often. I didn't care. I needed to grind yeah. or else I'm not going to make it. And then, so that was from 2015, 2016 to maybe like to 2017. And in 2017, I got a job at Fox 45 as an assignment editor. Okay. So I think a lot of people don't know that like, I I technically am an assignment editor. Like I started off as an assignment editor. Ah. Just like most of these, most of these big names, Mm-hmm. All started off as assignment editors. Um, Tell us a little bit more about that role, assignment. So editor. the assignment editor role, you are the eyes and ears of the newsroom. You're okay. the eyes and ears of the newsroom. Basically, you you're answering phones for the tip line. In addition to that, you're also um, you're writing web stories. You know, you're doing our you're handling the social media for the station. You know, you're mm. you're involved in everything. You're yelling out news as it's happening. You're listening to police scanners. You know, you're like, oh, I hear this. Wow. It's happening. Somebody just got robbed. Okay. When I'm hearing there's a, there's a shooting and you're, you're, you're the eyes and ears of the newsroom. Like everything goes through you. Okay. And like, that's an assignment. editor. I had no idea what an assignment editor was, but it looked like fun. Online. <laughs> I was like, this looks great. Let's do, I said, it said social media. Are you a news junkie? It was like, I said, you are selling this. This looks great. And then I got there. I almost ran on my first day 
because mm. they had um some guy has shot up a bus in Dundalk, Maryland, Baltimore County. I was mm-hmm. like, and they're like on it. This is breaking news. We gotta get this person here, this person here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh no, this is okay. chaotic for so me. You person. are also rounding up the the talent, the subject matter expert. Yes, like you have okay. to sometimes book somebody for them. And if you're, uh, you also have to assign who your reporter, your reporter and camera people who are going to work together for the day. Okay, so a team. So you have to assign those people too. So you have mm-hmm. to. That's your mm-hmm. first. That's one of your first jobs you're going to do. Then there's also events in the schedule, and you're like, okay, I can send a camera um, to this event. I can send a camera to this event. Um, mm-hmm. This is happening. Like, oh, it's a community event. I can send a camera here. Something feel good ish, you know. Okay. <laughs> you know, so you okay. have to, like you're really like everything really does go through you as an assignment editor. Mm. And I was writing web stories. I'm still am. I'm writing web stories. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, it's a fun, it's very interesting. It's so much fun, but it's it's a lot. It's it so sounds like a lot. And it sounds like a lot for a first day because Ooh. <laughs> it sounds to me like you would need to know, you know, the right cameraman, the right uh, on it. You got like, to you gotta know who is with who. Get, Exactly. I exactly. had to develop a system, girl. It was crazy. I was like, man, this is this is a lot. But you know what? It it literally shaped me to be who I am because if I didn't mm-hmm. learn the assignment desk, mm-hmm. how was I gonna become a, a, like on the lifestyle show? Now my obsession is celebrity news. I will tell you mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I like news in general, but my obsession is celebrity news and entertainment news. Okay. So I knew that. I was like, you know what? I'm here. I like all kinds of news. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. But I really want to do something with entertainment news. And I think they had a, they had like a correspondent. They had an entertainment reporter person who was there, but she got pregnant. So she left. So Mm -hmm. I was trying to fill in that spot. And I was like, you know, I got a new way of doing how, how we talk about things. And, you know, it's called, you know, you know, spilling the tea and everybody's talking about Mm -hmm. spilling the tea. And that's how um, I pitched it. And one thing I want people to learn how to do is pitch yourself. You need to learn how to pitch yourself. Because okay. that's how you get in the door. And you oh, just because you, you don't see what you want to do at a TV station or you, if you don't see if you don't see it at a company, mm-hmm. you don't know you can open that door to it. It's all about yes. how you pitch yourself. Yes. And, you know, uh, sh- shout out to my, my girl, Shardell Moore, our previous lifestyle host. She literally told me, she said, Here's what you're going to do. She said, you're going to start doing videos on your own. You're hilarious. She was okay. like, start doing videos on your own. Start so talking about entertainment news. Talking about your own. Okay. Start talking entertainment news on your own. Start doing it on your own with your phone and then clip it, cut it, edit it, put it together. And I said, okay, all right, I okay. can do that. Mm-hmm. And um, I called it Lady T News Now. And I would do it like once a week, every week. And then I'm like, this is exhausting. I don't want to do this no more. Yeah. And this yeah. to this job. And what are you doing with it at this point? Where are you distributing it? Who are you passing it along to? I'm putting it on my Lady T page. That was another thing I'm so glad um, my alma mater taught me. Create a, a like page. One of those like pages where somebody can, you know, follow you. If you don't want people to follow your actual personal page, create mm-hmm. a like page. Mm-hmm. And I, I was putting the videos on there. I was putting it on my personal page. I was putting it on my Twitter, my Instagram. My, okay. I was putting it places. And you, you're, what you're doing is you're building your following. Yeah. Because okay. your brand, you're trying to expand your brand. Mm-hmm. And I had, I was like, I don't understand what any of these words mean. But... <laughs> But now I do. I know what that means now. You're building your brand. Your brand is who are you? She told me, Shardell Moore, she told me create a website. I was like, what? I literally went home, create a website with Wix. It's what are you willing to do to get to where you want to be? That's like, and this is, you said this is 2017 at this point? This was 2019. Okay. This is like 2018, so, 2018, yeah. 2018. So people 2018, are taking full advantage of Instagram at this point to brand yes. themselves. And okay, mm-hmm. she was yeah. like, they were. She was very specific in what she would tell me to do. And then she said, okay, like, okay, now you're doing the videos. You pitched yourself. I pitched myself to the news department. They were like, ah, eh, you know, we're not really interested in that. And I said, okay, fine. And then um, I said, can I pitch myself upstairs to be more lifestyle? They were like, my, our news director was like, sure. Went okay. upstairs, pitched myself to them. They said, oh, we've been looking to spice up the show. This is perfect. So mm-hmm. what are you thinking? How do we get the photos? How do we get this? How do we get that? And they, I have to say, the people who vouched for me, the executive producer of the Lifestyle Show, the, mm-hmm. the uh, producer of the Lifestyle Show, they were just like, oh, we like this. Okay. And it was like how I was pitching it. I said, look at who, you know, this is how many people are looking at the videos that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm funny. I have the personality for it. I can, we can make this work. And you okay. show them, 
how you can make it work. And it was like, all right, let's try it. Then it went from let's try it to, okay, you want every week, once a week, every week. Wow. Then, all right. then it was like, okay, but just I'm still an assignment editor during this time. So okay. I'm leaving the desk briefly to go, you know, because you're the pitching show. at this point, you're pitching a segment. Yeah, I'm pitching my spilling the tea segment. Okay. And at okay. that point, I was I was pitching it. And then um, and then when you know, I, but I always wanted to like make sure that like okay, it, it stayed how I wanted it, you know, a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, it was a great experience because you really need to know how to pitch yourself. And I keep telling people that I'm like, you gotta learn how to pitch yourself. Yeah. Here's what I said. Um, I basically was like, listen, these are the videos I can do. Let's talk about the trending topics, the things that are happening. Here's a celebrity news part of it. Here's what Rihanna's doing. Here's what Cardi B is doing. Mm -hmm. Here's what's new with this. And it was something they didn't have on the show. And it just mm -hmm. needed something to spice it up. You never know what people are looking for. Yeah. You know, and to, in regards to spicing it up. And then I learned how to pitch myself and listen. It took off from there because I okay. left. And have, is this where you became the persona Lady T or were you already Lady T? Oh, I was already Lady T. Okay, Listen, okay. I was already Lady T. So we're going to backtrack then because I want to hear how, I want to hear the evolution of Lady T too. Oh, no, girl. It started off, we, it was like a, we had like a go-go band at my church and like we, everybody came up with their own names and mm -hmm. I was like, I'm Lady T. And I was okay. like. That was, and it was just like, they were like, okay, lady, see, we like that. And then I would host our church events, our youth events, or just any event at that point. Mm -hmm. I just started emceeing the church events and it would be like, oh, that's lady, see. And it stuck mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. And then even in college, I was like, yeah, I go by lady, see. And everybody was like, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. And I never forget, one person did tell me, they were like, I think you should just keep your name as Tiffany. <laughs> I don't like the lady T. There's thing. always one. Like, <laughs> it was like it was a it was a person who was so near and dear to me, and they were uh -huh. like, "Yeah, I don't like it." And I, I almost gave it. I almost gave it up. Like I almost gave it up. And I know there's a lot of lady T's. So when it came to me learning about branding, mm -hmm. I had to figure out how to make the lady T thing like work. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so I realized I was like, I got to come up with something catchy, like. I had to come up with something like catchy. So then I started with my fair lady T mm -hmm. and then, and then that picked up, like people love saying it, you know, I know it's part uh -huh. movie, but I just needed something that flowed. So my whole yeah. brand is my fair lady T yeah. and you know, cause there's a bunch of lady T's out there and shout out to all of them because y'all, y'all got it. <laughs> but um, the, in developing your own brand, you have to like what it is that you come up with. And okay. you have to be able to say it where yeah, you, you got to represent it. Well, you yeah. have to represent it. And there are people like sometimes you, you pick things and you're like, eh, I kind of like it. Oh, it just looks good. Oh, no, you really have to like put on for your brand. Like yeah. I am my fair lady T my website, my fair lady T dot net. My, mm -hmm. all of my social media matches. You got to make sure mm -hmm. all your social media matches, my fair lady T um, on everything. Okay. <laughs> so like everywhere is yep. my fair lady T just, you know, you keep it, you know, has to co it has to kind of like collaborate with each yeah. other. Yeah. Um, it comes full circle. So everything, my fair lady T on everything. And like, that was the evolution of lady T. It just, it caught on. People just liked it. And then now they're like, okay, lady T, my fair lady T, you know, it, it just, it, it is, I made it. I was like, look, this is what it is. And yeah. I, that's it. <laughs> And, the, and for, for consistency, like you said, building your building your following, being able to have those credentials behind you yeah. as you continue to pitch yourself. So now you've got this following mm -hmm. who knows and supports Lady T when you approach Fox mm -hmm. 45 to develop this segment. Yeah. And so how how does spilling the tea come uh, evolve out of that? It just oh spilling the tea it was like, let me see. You have to first of all, I had to come, I had to come up with several names. For the segment, it was like, what's the four one one? It was like, um, like I came up with like several names, mm -hmm. but they were like, no, spilling the tea. They were like, no, <laughs> we want spilling the tea. And I said, okay, fine. Okay, uh, I was like, All okay right. so it didn't have any. It, I thought it was maybe a play on your name. Yeah. So I was just like, no, because it's it's T E A. So right, I was just right. like, what What do you want to, and they were like, yeah, spilling the tea with lady tea. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And I was like, yeah. oh, all right. <laughs> so I kind of saw where they were going with it. And I said, you uh -huh. know what, let's do it. I said, because every time I used to go upstairs and talk to them and be like, oh, let's look y'all, it's tea time. 
And I would just have these little phrases that I would say. Like okay. when you develop your brand, you really got to do a lot with it. Like, yeah. I, what did I say? Like, I think when I first, when they first used to introduce me, I would be like, hey, y'all. But like after a while, it was like, I got to come up with like some slogans or something. Like, okay. <laughs> so then I started saying, um, now go sip on all that tea. And uh -huh. then like, uh -huh. I know I'm a, I'm a shoulders person. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Um, but <laughs> so like you have to say, you have to come up with different little slogans. You say, like I say, mm -hmm. hey, fellow tea sippers or, mm -hmm. you know, because everybody's talking about spilling the tea at the time. It was like everybody was talking about spilling the tea. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to really make it my own. And it was really it was really a little tough because I was like, I really like what's the 411 or what's the hat like what's happening now or Lady T News now or, you know, mm -hmm. um, or you know it, or I was coming up with different things and I was like, oh yeah, I like these. These are cute. And they were just like, no, spilling the tea. Yeah. Spilling the tea. tea. <laughs> I, was, I was like, yeah, let me go. You said, I need something. Let me get a cute cup. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, but we could do this. It was like, bring it down, bring it down here. And, um, and it made me feel like, I was like, man, how am I going to make this work? And, and listen, I sure enough did. Um, spilling the tea has, has elevated since then. Spilling the tea mm -hmm. has, has moved up. Yeah, let me tell you, I was doing what happened. How long was my segment? My segment was like six, five, six minutes long. I would okay. do like eight different entertainment news stories, have these conversations with them, and you know, with the with the host of the show, mm -hmm. and it was like five or six minutes long. And then they did a rebranding, and they mm -hmm. was like, okay, we got to shorten these segments. So mm -hmm. every segment is going to be like three minutes long, and I was like, well, dang, okay. Let me see how I can make this happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let me see how I can do this. And I have yeah, to... you're riding the high of actually pitching this, getting it yes. to see the right of day, excited about that. Like, and I then... was doing it once a week, and it was five five minutes, six minutes. Then he was yeah. like, girl, you got all the time in the world, seven minutes. I was like, yeah. hey, look yeah. at God. Like, yeah. I was living a dream. And then all of a sudden, it was like, all right, we're going through a rebranding phase. And this was like two years in. And they was like, we got to shorten the segments. And I was like, dang. So I was like, okay, so now I got to say all of what I've been saying, but like in less less time. So yeah. for me, that was hard. I had to change the photos I was using. I couldn't, we couldn't use certain images anymore. Yo, it was tough. I realized how much I went through and had to readjust. Um, yeah. And then we went from, we were on my TV Baltimore at first, and then they um, switched it over to Fox 45, like actually on Fox 45. Because we, at our mm -hmm. station, we have three different networks. We have CW, My TV Baltimore, and um, Fox 45. Okay. So mm -hmm. they were like, we're going to put Be More Lifestyle on Fox 45. And I got to be the, the host, to be the very first host of the show on Fox 45. When okay. it came on Fox 45. So that was amazing. Um but then they were like, okay, now the spilling the tea segment, they were like, we got to like change some things. And I was like, oh man. So I couldn't read off a card anymore. They were like, we need you to read a script. Uh, uh -huh. I was like, oh man, that was difficult. So y'all got to practice reading scripts at home. Okay. <laughs> you so go are these on a teleprompter? You got to practice reading teleprompters. Like, yeah. Okay. I, um, one thing I really do excel at, I could say is a teleprompter. I, I have like, I'm not good with like serious news, but I'm really good at like the teleprompter. I can mm -hmm. read. I can mm -hmm. read really well. I can fake it. Mm -hmm. I can make up things. I can. <laughs> can you can deviate? Can you deviate from the script? How much are you they can. writing for as your long personality? As, still makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. as long as it still makes sense, you're fine. You're okay. Good. It's just, and are, just are the writers trying to, to capture your personality, or are you a part of that writing? Writing for the script. Oh, listen, that was a okay. big deal too. They was like, now you got to write it too. They was like. Okay. You gotta okay. write your tea also. I used to just have it on like a card and mm -hmm. then they were like, and our, our executive producer, our new one, she was like, okay, um, now we're gonna do, <laughs> she was like, now we're gonna, do, now we're gonna actually like have you write it yourself mm -hmm. um, because we want you to put in the lady tea like sizzle. They yeah, want that lady exactly. tea, your language because you're not saying what's on there. You're doing it like this. You're doing this. You're like, oh my gosh, wait, what? And right, the commentary, right. they were like, put that in there too. So I had to start using, I had to start writing the script. That was different too. You have to learn how to write mm -hmm. a script. Oh God, that was different for me also. <laughs> it was a transition, but it upgraded. She, my my yeah. executive producer, Aaron Miller, I love you so much. She upgraded my segment 
And because of the upgrades she made to my segment and us adding in, let me tell you, I came up mm -hmm. with a name for that segment. Mm -hmm. um, they, Cause all of them pulled me in a room was like, they were like, okay, what do you tell people when you want to like, you know, say some kind of news or something, you know, talk about trending topics. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'd be like, oh, let me tell you. And yeah, that's yeah. how they came, we came up with a title for it. Yeah, I, I've heard it since we've been talking today. You've said it a couple of times. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I say it repetitively. It was my thing. Yeah. I still say it a lot. Okay. And it's because like, and that's how I came up with it. And that's how we came up with the name for the segment. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, you really got to pitch. Look, you really got to like pitch yourself for certain yeah. things. Um, but yeah, that's how Spilling the Tea is upgraded. And the next thing you know, I get nominated for an, an Emmy. Um, I submitted my tea, the let me tell you, and different things I was doing. And boom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Emmy well, nomination. Us, I was like, this is a lot. Tell us about that process. Because I know there's, there's a lot that people don't know about the process to, <laughs> you know. That was like, I mean, mainly your stations do it. Your TV stations, okay. they do it. There's a um, one person at your station who will help you um, basically, they're like, what do you want to submit for? And I'm like, I don't know, you tell me. And you put together, so uh, there's different ways that you can go about doing it for the uh, the Capital Emmys. You can just, you can do like little snippets of different things that, you know, you've done, mm -hmm. or you can do an entire package. Um, uh, a package is basically like a, your, your full story. Sometimes it's three, four minutes long. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're looking for a certain amount of uh, time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and it's it's really it's really there's one person at your station who helps you with that process. Okay, uh, but you got to come around up with your best this stuff. time of year. There's mm -hmm. already someone who's ready to start packaging or supporting the talent. So they so we already submitted. So that's the thing. So it starts as of December of okay. the year. It starts of December. So December of 2022, they mm -hmm. were like, "Hey, look, start submitting." They were like. Yeah. What do you want to submit for? Start submitting, and you have to pull your, you know, your your best stuff. You put your yeah. best stuff together, and um, you hope for the best. I remember last year, I didn't even get like, I didn't get nominated, nothing. I was like, oh man. But then the Emmys was like, uh, can you come host? We want you. We're doing a social media stage. Okay. We want you to be one of our hosts, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so and they found you. It. They approached you. They came, yeah, they were okay. like, we always have you um, talk to the upcoming journalists. So they were like, you know, we want you to come on and just, you know, can you come host? Can you come host this okay. stage for us? They do this social media stage. Mm -hmm. And I guess they had tried it before and it didn't work. So I don't know how okay. that went. But um, yeah, it was like our first year back in person at mm -hmm. the Capital Emmy Awards. And they were like, host our social stage. And I was reading tweets and I was keeping everybody laughing and I had mm -hmm. different, like, it was like being a part of like the big Emmy Awards. I was like, this is yeah. nice. Okay. So you mentioned, you like mentioned the Capital Emmys earlier in our conversation. So at this point, yeah. are you a member? Are you a student member? You know, oh, no. So when did, when did this happen? This was a, this was in 2020. Was this 2021? I think it was 2021 when I submitted mm -hmm. and they told me I won for the 20s. They told me I, I was nominated. Okay. So like you, that's what I said. It's the December before. It's the December mm -hmm. before they're like, mm -hmm. okay, look, we're ready to start getting like, you know, your 2021 stuff. And um, yeah, that was the year I, I got nominated for, but we had to submit December 2021 and they don't tell you until like May. So yeah. <laughs> they don't tell you until May of the following year, but yeah, it's, that was like 2021. That was a heck of a year. Cause that was the year I had, um, was that the year whenever COVID had like officially COVID was an official swing 2020. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, that was a lot was going on for me that year. Um, my, you know, Popeyes had reached out to me for my Popeyes video, ah, yeah, sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you know, that was a heck of a year that I didn't even know, um, that they actually used it in a commercial until, when was that? The end of t December, December slash January, December 2020, 2020, and then 2021, I was like, it was everywhere. Everybody was like, you know, your face is on TV all the time talking about this chicken sandwich. And I was like, okay, oh, no. so tell me about that process. So they don't have to reach out to you. They don't, you don't have to get no, they signing did. They reached out to or me. waivers or. No, they did. They were okay. like, they sent it through somebody else who represented them. 
Uh-huh. And they were like, hey, can we use, like, they were like, hey, we're thinking about using, like, nine seconds of your video. Mm-hmm. And so what happened was in 2019, you know, when Popeye's Chicken Sandwich was the popping thing. Yeah. Everybody was talking about it. Yeah. Everybody was doing videos. Yeah. Um, so my little silly self, I thought I could do a video. I thought it was a great process. I thought I could do a video. I did. Um, I'm just talking about different, like, things of how, like... <laughs> How amazing the sandwich is. I'm like, this chicken sandwich tastes like it went to an HBCU and was in a marching band. Uh-huh. And I was like, I just I just started going off about different things I thought this Popeye chicken sandwich did. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and it was it was just it was just me being but funny. Sent it um, up to God and he swiped right. He sent it up to God and he swiped right. And uh, you know, this it tastes like someone's grandma Lucille fried uh-huh. and spice right over. Sent it up to God and he's like, right. And he's right, right. And I, you know, with me saying those things, I was just really trying to be funny. And um, it was just a normal video, my, my actual mm-hmm. video, and my station posted it. Mm-hmm. Everybody was posted it. And, <laughs> and I got fried, girl. They like went in on me. People were like, girl, you don't need to talk about no chicken sandwich. Like, you too big to be doing that. Like, oh no, yes, girl, I got lit up in the comments. They was like, oh Lord, here she go. That's what is that? Why is her room pink? I mean, they they went in on me and I felt so bad for even doing the video. Um, cause I was like, dang, like, I didn't think it'd be that much negative response. Yeah. And then Popeye's reached out and was like, Hey, we think we want to use like nine seconds of your video. And I was like, Oh, okay, cool. And then I was like, all right. So, um, they said, we just need your permission. And I said, it's perfect. Here you go. And, um, uh, I didn't know which nine seconds of it they needed to use. They were mm-hmm. like, I had to run through a test to see like if people would like it. Mm-hmm. And then um, I ain't hear from them mm-hmm. <laughs> for a while, and then I was like, okay, well maybe they decided not to use it, and that's why eight months later, I was like, I was like, I wonder whatever happened to that. Oh, okay. I, never heard I see, I see. Okay, I ain't never hear anything. I was just they said, we need your permission. Here you go. Like, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I signed it, and it was just you know, that was like, I mean, that was a surprise because I didn't know that. It, I thought it was just for the test, you know, to see like, like how, how it, you know, ranges with people, how it, mm-hmm. uh, how they, how they react to it. I mm-hmm. thought that was what it was for. So I was so excited. I was like, okay, oh my okay. gosh, they're just using it for that. Like, I feel so important still. <laughs> and then when I saw my face on TV, I was like, oh my God, I wish I had done my makeup better. Like, I, uh, I was like, oh. So, so how much strategy is involved in that then? Because when you. Not, that you was know, the strategy of God. That that's was the strategy. Okay, so when you created the video, it was for what? Just for I fun? Was just, just something to post? I was trying to be a content fun? creator. I thought I was. I thought I was Kev on stage, girl. Gotcha. I thought. Okay. And I got to open up for him. Thank God. Um, okay. But I, mm-hmm. I got to open up for him one time, and it was, it was, it was hilarious. It was great. But I was trying to be a content creator. I saw all these people making videos, and I was like. You know, my um, life coach at the time, Chardell Moore, was like, you can be funny. You're so, you're so funny. You can do this. Like, okay. start making mm-hmm. videos. And I was like, oh, man, like, I got to b- put in work. And she said, yeah, start making the funny <laughs> videos now. So every, <laughs> she really, when I tell you, this woman put me to work. She literally had me doing so many things that I would not ever do. Okay. Um, but she really put, believed we, in we me. We're going to have to put her information in the episode notes. <laughs> yes, you're going to have to put her. Shonda Moore, <laughs> this woman, she's a motivational speaker now. Okay. Um, but she literally, that sis, oh my gosh, she really put me in. Yeah. She really like got me where I am. She pushed me. Every week she gave me a new task. And I'd be like, yo, Shonda, leave me alone. But mm-hmm. I would do it. Because mm-hmm. something about her voice and when she said it, like I, I just reacted, my spirit jumped and I was like, oh, I got to do it now. Yeah. So she just had me like, I said, okay, I'm gonna do these funny videos. Like you said, and I just, I did the funny video and a lot of people laughed. They really did. A lot of people did like it, but it was mm-hmm. the negative stuff that I focused on. I said, dang, yeah. this, yeah. people are brutal. <laughs> I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, people are harsh, but I'm glad I did it. I, you know, my face was everywhere for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I look back on it, I'm just like, and that was when I knew I was like, you know what? I really do want to be in acting. So I also try to do acting on the side too. Okay. So how does that influence um, your your relationship with uh, with Fox Forty Five? So does that does it help? Does I mean, it-, it, it helps. They, I mean, they love seeing my billboards um, mm-hmm. that were in Pennsylvania. They were like, "Oh my God, you're on a billboard!" 
Okay. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I'm just wondering about things like, like you said, representing your brand, them doing yeah. this, this, this rebrand for the, um, for the, for the network. Yes. It just makes you wonder if, if anything that you do personally, oh impacts, my. you know what it, I mean? I, I always, you know, I try to have a conversation with them. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, I have this coming up. It's just about communication. Like, okay. you know, there's certain things, of course, I know you can't do. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of them just want you to have a conversation with them. Like, <laughs> like, oh, okay, well, this is coming out of pike. Like, I'm doing this. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, so it's just your, you, it, the relationship that you have with your, your bosses. And I have great news directors. And they're like, Lady T is a star. Yeah. You know, and they just throw up their hands. They just like, Lady T is a star. That's that. So yeah. I love to hear it. Shout out to my sister, this director, Andrea. She's always like, nope, Lady T is a star. I love it. And yeah. <laughs> so it's just about the relationship that you have with them. Um, you know, there are limits, I know, to what you could do, but I I don't see a limit. I'm just like, look, let me just do whatever I can at this point. I try not mm -hmm. to go too far. Um, I, I try to make be better decisions as to mm -hmm. what I actually do. But um, some of it comes to us as a surprise because I wasn't even, I didn't even know about the billboards. I knew that it was supposed to be like an internet ad. It was just a print ad, you know, okay. for breast cancer. And okay. I was so happy to be a part of it because I was like, oh, yay, I get to um, be a part of this um, internet ad. And my mom would be so proud of me, mm -hmm. you know, because she was a healthcare fanatic. So I was like, ah, mm -hmm. I love this. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited. And then um, it was actually our anchor, Tom Rogers, his wife was like, Hey, Lady T is on a billboard in Pennsylvania. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, oh. And then I drove my behind right after work. I was like, uh -huh. right there. Yeah, I saw, your, I saw your post on Instagram. <laughs> I was like, let me go see it because I want to see what I'm doing. And I was like, wow. And I just, I sat there for just a few minutes just looking at it. And I was like, yeah. I just had to take it in because I said, oh man, I'm so sad. My mom isn't here for it. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, I felt like, oh my gosh, like she's proud. Like she Absolutely. would love this. Yeah. And I, I just needed to see for myself that it existed. Yeah. So then I come back and I'm like, I want to billboard you guys. Ah! And, you know, my station runs it. It was great. Yeah. And then my former executive producer at our station who lives in Pennsylvania, he said, hey, there's a few more billboards of you. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh yeah, because that so it's a regional thing. So they're seeing it because they're commuting into the area. Yes. So he was like, "You," he was like, "You got a couple more," and then I was like, "Okay, well, I need to see those too." And okay. I said, "What am I going to do?" And I, I picked a Saturday, and I said, "I'm just going to drive up there and see it." Mm -hmm. And then I saw a couple, and then I got really overwhelmed, and I was like, "This a lot." I was like, "All right, let me come on back. Let me just go." <laughs> let me just go back. I took photos, selfies, I did all that, and I was like. Yeah. This is, it's like a dream come true. So it was really nice yeah. to see, like, you know, that, I don't know, it was, it, you just never know the, like, what God could do. Like, he'll, he'll tell you what he can do early on in your life. And you're like, oh, this is what you meant. This is nice. Mm -hmm. I like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, this is mm -hmm. a process. It's a process. But you really have to believe in yourself. And you really have to, like, exude a confidence like none other. Or else you're just going to continue to just dwell yeah. in a place where you're like, uh, I should have done this. I could have done this. Yeah. So I don't want to be like that. So yeah, yeah. don't want to have any regrets. So yeah. what about representation in this process? So do you have an agent? Do you have someone who's also looking for these opportunities for you? Talk yeah, about I have that. an acting agent and okay. just, just for acting, not for TV, not okay. for like the, the, the news part. Um, I have an acting agent and they are phenomenal. Um, <laughs> so they, uh, actually my agency is who I'm with and they literally, they find you like different places to audition for, mm -hmm. um, but they knew my dreams, they knew my goals. And I was just like, I really want to do so much more than, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just felt like I was, I just, I'm supposed to be doing other things. Yeah. And they understood. When did that start? When did that start? Cause at this point you're, you have your own segment on, um, be more lifestyle. Oh. So you're doing all the things at this I point. I know. Yeah, so I know I was look, I don't know. Look, I tell you, I don't know what I was, I don't know what I'm on, but I literally I everything kind of happened so fast last year. I feel like because by March slash eight was it March or April? I think uh I don't know, several people kept telling me you need an acting agent. Like I can see you in movies and you're hilarious and you need to be doing other things. And I said, okay, so I I got a referral from an anchor that I know 
and I got a referral. Her friend worked, you know, her friend is an acting, she's an actress as well. And okay. she was like, and she saw my stuff and she was like, oh, I, I think my, and she was like, let me try to reach out to my agent. I, th- I think this would be great. And, you know, that was a connection that was like divine intervention. I felt mm-hmm. like, cause, mm-hmm. cause that's not easy. Um, But yeah. So it was just, it was just something where it was like a friend of a friend. And okay. she has an agent and she was like, let me see if my agent will take you. And they were like, oh yeah, we want to meet her. And it was, a, it was a Zoom. They set up a Zoom for like f- three weeks from then. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I didn't start taking some acting classes. So then I started taking acting classes at McKinnon Acting Studio. And okay. I'm basically, I don't know if this matters, but I'm literally doing every single thing that my mom wanted me to do. We had talked about this. like. Mm hosting acting like comedy she like this is all that oh, she wanted me to well, do she did eventually lean into it and she was, was supportive okay gotcha 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 okay when i opened for kevin on stage sis was she was up and just yeah she was so excited okay so, so this has all been within the past two years yeah all so she it. was like that was like i mean but she really like supported me i want to say when I started the reporter job, like she was okay. like, okay, yeah, I like this. So, okay. um, that was fine, but it was just the, I think as time went on, she just became more and more proud. And she was like, oh my mm-hmm. gosh, I love okay. this. I see this. I see the dream. She got with the program. Yes. I can say that. <laughs> I said, I did it real quick. And I was like, the lightning better not strike. Better not strike. Yeah. I'm trying to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> so then I was like, I know she's here. So I get a little scared sometimes. Like, I love it. I love it. I, I love like, it. She got with the program. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was like okay, so that all happened like last year, I want to say. Okay. Um, and then like, Lord, from there, mm-hmm. everything just was like, it kind of was like this. And the acting thing is a whole different discussion we gotta have because my Lord, but okay. McKinnon Acting Studio, studio shout out to them. I started acting classes. I started trying to get my life together. Um. Uh, it took me to new levels with them. I have, mm-hmm. I love my McKinnon acting studio, my, my, my family. Um, that's a whole nother family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, shout out to Mark McKinnon. Uh, but yeah, like that was a great experience as well. So yeah, I basically like, I'm, ta- I'm trying to tackle things that like your dreams can come true. I'm trying yeah. to tackle all my dreams is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so you mentioned, um, agency representation once you wanted to move into acting Would right that have supported your career in news like breaking into news how hard it was in the beginning would that have helped let me see hold on real quick let me get my charger okay. don't okay. don't kill me don't kill nope, me nope. Hold on. nope do what you gotta do i'm getting my charger that's how much i love you i, I appreciate <laughs> it i'm like that's how much i love you i said let me get this charger going because my phone said 10%, but I believe it this time. All right, I'm here. All right, I'm perfect, back. I'm perfect. sorry. Okay. Yeah, there are, there are TV agents. Look, like, there are TV agents. I See, that's a that, professional right there. You jumped right back in. <laughs> just act like everything's normal, ladies. Just, just act like everything's normal. No, but I, I, you know, there are TV agents and they, they do say it's good to get a TV agent. Um, mm-hmm. I know even I wanted one. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's a good opportunity to have someone to represent you. So you don't have to go through a lot of those difficult things. So, um, I, I don't have much experience with the TV agent part, Okay, but I know all you have, I know what they say to do is look for, you know, Google TV agents, look at the reviews and mm-hmm. see specifically what they tackle with mm-hmm. TV news and send emails out, start to be like, Hey. I'm Sydney Lady T. I host this. I do that. I'm mm-hmm. a reporter. I'm this or that. And those agents will represent you. Um, and, you know, they get their cut of whatever yeah. your, your actual, you know, your end up with your salary. But they definitely help represent for you. They, they yeah. want the best for you. They want you to have mm-hmm. the biggest opportunity that you can get. And that is what their goal is. So I, I've heard yeah. of a lot of good experiences with TV agents. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. So we're having this conversation and trying to, you mm-hmm. know, give some tips and best practices so people, when they want to pursue this, 
They yes. don't have the challenges that you've had. And so I'm just They're trying to connect the dots and would mm -hmm. that have helped earlier on in your career? Okay. All right. So that's how. Yes, it okay. definitely. But see, for where I was going, it's a little tougher though. Cause I was, I was, that's why I said, I'm not, I'm not the norm. So mm -hmm. I can tell you, I had to open a door that wasn't there. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was, that was different though. I was, I was opening a door that was not there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it was like, uh, you have entertainment news on your lifestyle show. Okay, well, I can bring that and here's why mm -hmm. you need it. Mm -hmm. And that is what I did. So it was just opening doors in different areas and learning how to do some other things along the way. So yeah. it was it was a little different. My path was a little different, but TV agents, I do know, I've heard good things about getting one. It's very helpful. You need people to represent you so you can get that better offer. Yeah. So, yeah. I've been having similar conversations. I interviewed um, Cedric Gray recently. He's a linebacker for UNC Tar Heels. And we were talking hey. about, like, yeah, that NIL representation. Awesome. To, so that now they have the, the restriction has been lifted where they can actually market themselves. They can yep. get endorsement deals and things like that. Yes. So he has an NIL agent. And so the conversation we were having was to, you know, let these student athletes know as they move into collegiate sports, what they can do ahead of time with social media, with establishing themselves as a brand alongside being oh, yeah. you know, performers, being, um, I think the word he used was producing, you know, just be, yeah, being, being, um, just being a, a good athlete, a solid, yeah. strong athlete. And with so them, it's going to be a lot of products. It's going to be a lot yeah. of products for them. Like, right. Um, right. for me, I'm hoping to come out with my own, like, I, I change my teacup up like every year. And like, ah, there's a girl yeah. who brings it out for me. And uh -huh. people send me cups. And um, I just spilled the tea recently at a tea house. So I'm okay. looking to do different things and try new things. And like, sometimes you'll have like- um, To align like, with the product or service. Yeah, whatever yeah. you're mm -hmm. selling, mm -hmm. whatever your brand is, you know, it could be yeah. products. It could be a, it could be your own, my own teacup. Look, yep. when you see me come out with my own teacup, I don't want to hear nothing, okay? Because yep. it's finna be, it's going down, okay? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> like Lady T teacups, you know what I mean? So it's whatever Perfect. fits your yep. brand. You got to mm -hmm. go with it. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what they're going to start doing. So I'm excited for them because you know what? They, they, they should have other avenues to be able to make money. Right. So I, I totally agree with that. So I'm, I'm happy that they, they're getting to do that now, actually. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. So let's see what happened. We talked about, I, I think I want some I good industry stories, a while, a good, <laughs> What's your wildest industry story? And now you've got the comedian, the experience as a comedian to oh. add to the equation too. So now you're rubbing elbows with LA, you know, Hollywood. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. I, I've met a lot of celebs. Okay. I have met so many celebs like, and I really love it. I love what was, you know, what was a life changer for me? I could tell you mm -hmm. like my, the, let me see, because I, I don't think I've had like a, a nip slip or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I haven't had a nip slip or anything like that. But um, I never forget, like, R.I.P. Lisa Marie Presley, but like on TMZ okay. Live, when she was going through her divorce like years mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. and I had to comment on there. And like, you know, they knew I was funny from the first couple times that I was on there. But mm -hmm. like, I just was like, I got to take it up a notch, you know, every single time. So when Lisa Marie Presley was going through her divorce with her husband, and I used to always see him wear these hats. So my mm -hmm. my joke to them was, you know, like, you know, because he, he was coming at her for everything she had. And I was like, you know, she should have started getting a little bit suspicious when his hat collection started moving all her stuff over in the closet. And I'll never forget Harvey and Charles laughed so hard. They had to pause um, the the taping of the uh -huh. TV line. Yeah. <laughs> they had to pause. <laughs> I mean, it was a full belly hunch over. Um, and they said, <laughs> they said, wait, 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 we gotta, <laughs> they said, we gotta, we gotta chill for a second. So then um, they had to like come back and I had to like, they kind of had to do it again because mm -hmm. they laughed so hard. And it was like, at that moment, I knew like where I was going in life. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and the joy that I have of making people laugh yeah. is like directly that. I was like, oh my goodness. So um, I'm not like some wild kind of story that I've had when I was a reporter. Mm -hmm. Listen, when I was a reporter, there was some wild things that used to be done. I, there was one dude who mistakenly spit on me 
I was like, <laughs> you take a lot. It's, you take a lot. <laughs> okay, tell me that. Like, what can I say that doesn't sound bad? Like it's it a wild story. It's a crazy story. Yes, there was like this lady who, I mean, I, we get cussed out when they call that tip line at my job. Uh, and like, I'm like, so I'm trying to figure out which crazy story to tell you. Okay. Um, but yeah, we can come back to that. Okay, we'll come okay. back to it. Okay. Because there's a lot. I'm like, dang, I got to censor everything. I'm trying to think. <laughs> so like, let me censor it. So what's next? Oh, what's girl. next for Lady T? Um, let me see. I don't know. What is next? Oh, you know what I want to do next? I, okay. I always dreamed of becoming like a plus size model okay i know it's 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 very far left but um not necessarily it's all under the umbrella of well entertainment being a yeah uh, personality on camera personality yeah so, talk about it girl yeah. yes <laughs> say it i like i love dressing nice i always am known for my fashion and mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. my my clothes and stuff so um and my jewelry and stuff, as you can mm -hmm. see, like people just uh, look, I can't help it. Um, so, um, it all started with the purse with the dog. Come on now, it was the dog <laughs> and a, it was the fake dog. It was the fake dog. Talk about it. The dog walking. Okay. <laughs> 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 this is, I a real dog. Oh Lord. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So I think next to me, I want to do plus size modeling. Okay. And, um, I want to like. I want to act in a Tyler Perry film. Okay. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to like, that's a big goal of mine. I want to, I want to, I want to be like in all his films, his TV shows. Like I plan on that next. Um, I don't know. I, I have some dreams in mind, um, but I really, I really feel like sky's the limit for me. So hopefully mm -hmm. you'll probably see me, my face a lot more. Um, and you'll probably see, you know, me strutting around somebody's like, you know, fashion show, but I really do believe, uh, you know, I have a platform, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I stand out, you know, not just because I'm so beautiful, um, but I just, <laughs> I stand out because <laughs> I'm this plus size woman doing things that, and like, you know, raising the bar yeah. and, you know, breaking down barriers and just representing for us. And Absolutely. I just, you know, I, I don't know. My mom always be, my mom always told me, she was like, girl, she was like, you don't know. She was like, it has nothing to do with size, anything like that. You're just beautiful in general mm -hmm. and it shines through. So I was like, okay, that's nice and all, but I, <laughs> but I like to look good mama. And, um, mm -hmm. but I just really want to like tackle those things next. I really feel like my brand is just, you know, I am representing for, you know, these women who may seem or feel like they can't do certain things, but you can mm -hmm. like, really, mm -hmm. you literally can. I am living yeah. the proof of it. Um, and I just want to, I just want to tackle that next. I want to do some more with that. I want to like show that the plus size beauty in us is, is there to shine through. Yeah. And like, that's my next thing I, I really want to tackle. Um, okay. so I'm working on that currently. So we'll see. Okay. And what shape does that take? Is that, are you doing some, I said, what shape is that taking? Are you doing some, are you going to do any kind of events, any inspirational Ooh, events? Yeah. Or... So I'm thinking of doing like an event. I'm thinking of doing like something. I want to do like a tea, like a tea party. I want to do like a tea party. I'm um, there. And I'm thinking of that. So I haven't really, I haven't really come together with it, but you'll see, listen, it's coming this way. Okay. Okay. Um, but I really want to like, my next goal is full figure fashion. And just tackling that industry next. Cause that's all I look at online. I'm just like, oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I'm just like, oh, I need it all. And I just, I really feel like that's next for me. So I'm going to tackle it in different ways. I'm thinking I need to throw some events and like connect with some people. Mm -hmm. I, I look, I, I've seen it in my head. I just need it to come. Yeah. So I need it to manifest. So yeah. that's my next thing that I'm working it's, on. It's already happened. It doesn't it sound is. like there's been anything that, you wanted to accomplish that you haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like, and mm -hmm. then when you see it, it's just it, it's just the favor of God, girl. It really is, cause it's <laughs> cause I'm like, how am I still here? This is amazing. <laughs> it's hard. You've been through a lot, you know. It's 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 a lot, but I have a good support system. You know, I have my sister. Mm -hmm. She's my older sister. Mm -hmm. I have my um my brothers. Um, those are my I, I call them brothers because they're cousins. Um, my, yeah, they're cousins. They're like my mom, my mom and dad adopted them. Um, gotcha. so okay. Okay. they, I just, 
it's easier to explain it that way. So I just say Brussels and yeah. People understand. So look, yeah. I, it's a running joke at our station, whatever. The Brussels uh -huh. are here and those are my biggest supporters. They will jump around with me whenever they see my face somewhere new. They're like, oh my gosh, here she, she's done it again. And they, <laughs> they're hilarious. They get their humor from me. So um, I have a really good support system. My dad is here. So okay. yeah, we definitely like, you know, it's good to have a good support system. You know who, who, who the people who are for you. Absolutely. And the people who are against you, they'll fall by the wayside anyway. So, <laughs> so you know, it's good to have a good support system yes. with you. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. So where can people find you, Lady T? Oh, Lord, girl. Okay. So here's where you can find me. Okay. So I'm at My Fair Lady T on Facebook, Instagram. You can hit me up on the Twitter, <laughs> um, on TikTok. I'm My Fair Lady T also. Okay. Um, I also love doing some restaurant hopping. So you'll see a lot of like good food on my mm. social media. Just okay. 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 Mm -hmm. um, so yes, My Fair Lady T on everything. If you want, follow my website, MyFairLadyT.net. Okay. And of course, you got to tune into Fox 45 every single, literally every day. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, want Fox 45 yeah. every day. So yes. I suppose it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I'm on every day for let me tell you, I'm going to make you laugh. I'm going to make you probably belt out, you know, laughing. And then that's probably what you need for the day. That's yes. the medicine for the day. <laughs> This was awesome. Oh, thank you. This was amazing. I really enjoyed talking with you. Yeah, yeah. Same here. Same here. Yeah, this was good. So was yeah, so people don't always make the connection that the show is, that the podcast is about change and navigating hardship, uh, you know, and dealing with the grief, the loss that come with change. I mean, that's what the podcast is about. Girl, I words. knew it. I, yeah. That's my life. I literally had to switch everything up due to my mom's passing and mm -hmm. it has literally just been a whirlwind. So everything I do now, um, my mom, when she, when she had got cancer the second time, I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to go to LA. I'm going to do this. And she, and she was like, go do it. And I said, no, you're sick. I'm staying here. Mm -hmm. So this was really a process for me to like still follow along and do this. So that's mm -hmm. my grief. Girl, I'm currently seeing a grief therapist. It is so important. Yes, yes, um, yes. Or else I would give up. So I really, <laughs> I really am grateful for so those that, who are like And that was what I wanted to ask you, but you said that very early in the conversation. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I wanted to, I wanted to make sure I circled back to it. Um, yeah. But you know, so I, I just, I'm interested, of course, in that journey in your that's healing a big process part of my life and that's what you did. Part. Yeah. yeah. So how what were the months and the I guess the year because it's you said it's been about a year and a half. It's been about a year and a half because uh -huh. she passed not last year but the year before the June uh -huh. before, and I think if I, listen I. I really thought that like she wouldn't catch cancer again. I, I thought it was gone the first time. Um, mm -hmm. It was uterine cancer. So the second time when she got mm -hmm. it, we were like, well, she was like, I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting. And we were with her, mm -hmm. went to her radiation appointments, brain therapy, all that good stuff. And it wasn't until, um, you know, I, I remember being in those moments with her and I was, she started doing some things where it was like, you know, she was like, I got to pay this. I got to pay that. I got to pay this. And she was doing different things mm -hmm. around the house. And I was like, why, why the rush? Like we're fine. Yeah. We have time. And in that very same weekend, you know, uh, those were the, the last times she was able to voice something to us. And then she passed the very next week. So that was a mm -hmm. trying time because she was such a formidable, she was a force in my life. Like, yeah. And I need her. I, I still feel like till this moment, I need her, which is why I'm in grief therapy. Cause yeah. I'm like, I, I had to transition from, I get to live with this woman every single day. And now mm -hmm. it's like, how do I live my life now without her? Right. And you can't just tell somebody like this, oh, get over it. No, this woman was at every single comedy show recording mm -hmm. it. This woman yeah. was at every single thing I did. Any yeah. event I hosted and emceed, she was yeah. like the whole family, we come in. Like, this was my my number one supporter I, I lost. And, you know, it was difficult. So the yeah, grief therapy it's a really completely different help. life. Right, right. I was like, man, I was like, I can't believe I, I have to be part of a new circle, a circle of people who have lost their, their parent or yep. one of their parents. Yep. And then I became Did you, do like that? A, Did you find like a community? Other people. Okay. Did you do that? Did you find a, a community of people who were going through something similar? 
Yes. So I okay. did that, but it wasn't in a good way. Like it just, the people at my job, like they started to lose their parents too. And it was like, okay, okay well, Lady T, can I talk to you about this? Because you start to feel like only that person or like understands how you feel. Yeah. That's tough. Like, it's like, you're trying to tell other people, but they're like, yeah, like, but they, you, don't, you don't understand. Like, you don't understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, well, you'll get over it soon. No, I still have the anguish. And right. when the anguish finally goes away, you're like, okay, good. Now it's just the sadness and the sad part, but you really, it's, it's learning to move on and live and develop new friendships with people who have gone through something similar. And you guys yeah. begin to, we, we begin to rely on each other. We're like, well, this is the update. Did you have to go through this? Um, mm -hmm. You had to get social security. You mm -hmm. had to talk to this person. And, you know, how was the planning of the funeral? Was it like this yeah. for you? And which, which funeral home did you use? Like, it was, it was an awkward thing to have to like talk to other people about, right? Mm -hmm. Now you're like the source of like information for it all. <laughs> you're like, because otherwise it's, you feel isolated. Yeah. You know, nobody exactly. is really allowing you to grieve, you yes. know, especially, especially with a personality like yours. Yes. Like upbeat, they expect you to be the life of the party. Oh. So it's awkward probably. Oh, you really are a grief therapist, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. talk to my therapist about that. My group therapist all the time about that. I was like, girl, I'm supposed to be, and I have a life coach too. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be the life of the party, but I miss my mom. Like, you yeah. know, I miss her. Christmas was her favorite holiday. So I miss her around then. Um, Thanksgiving, you know, I miss her not rushing me into getting married. Like she was mm -hmm. just like, oh, mm -hmm. don't you talk to my daughters like that. Like mm -hmm. they don't have to rush into getting married or anything like that. And I don't have that like, I don't have that blockage, that protection anymore, you know, yeah. when we lost her. So, you know, it was just, it's different now, but my grief therapist, she understands that. And right. I'm trying to be in the recovery phase now, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, girl. It's a whole, there's a process. I yes, it is. Yes, it is. And with no timeline. So, and, so take your time. And you guys Not don't judge. You guys yeah. don't judge. And I love that about you. I, I told my grief therapist, I said, I had a dream where my mom came and sat down on the bed and she spoke with me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that I, that's all I was longing for. Mm -hmm. And we're laughing, we're talking, she's telling me things. And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, is that real? And she's like, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, she was telling me certain things, giving me certain tips. And she said, you don't think I see what you're doing? She was like, I'm so proud of you. I see it mm -hmm. all. And I needed that. And when mm -hmm. I told my grief therapist, she didn't even judge me. She didn't think I was crazy. Nice. She just like, <laughs> she yeah. was like, Oh my God, I'm so happy. She was like, she just was like, this is what you needed. You were looking yes. for that validation. Exactly. Exactly. And there, and there's no right or wrong. Like whatever you experience after this yes. loss is everything you were supposed to experience. Come on. Tell it. Yes. it just, yes. But you don't feel like it. I'm like, man, I got to do all this without her. It wasn't until my mom died. I mean, I catapulted into a whole different, oh God, yeah. my life. I, and I think I really wouldn't have done any of these things had she not passed away. I would not have taken acting classes. I would not have done any of these things, been like hosting and stuff, if she had not passed away. I was gonna stick by her side regardless. And I, and I think that was part of the reason it was yeah. like, God was like, come on, I gotta break this up a little mm -hmm. bit because you're you gotta grow a little bit. You gotta grow and mature. And I'm glad she's not in any pain anymore. So I always see the good in it. I'm like, she's not in any pain anymore. She's yeah. proud of me. Like, I got to focus on the good. The bad is that I don't have my number one supporter with me. And yeah. I think that's the part I, I hate. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's great that you you see that, that you, yeah. can, you can look at both the negative that comes yeah. out of the loss, but also the positives. Yeah. And those, and those are conflicting emotions. You know, it is. Because I'm, yeah. I'm, like, I'm yeah. like, wait, oh, I'm happy. No, I'm sad. I'm right. like, <laughs> Right. But it's all normal. Yeah. Every yeah. Everything that you're experiencing is this is normal. why I love this is why I love you guys. You guys are so important. Yeah. I think uh, I don't know, a lot of people don't know about it as much. I feel like grief recovery right. efforts. Yep. It's a big deal. It's a huge yep. deal. Yes. And so important. So significant. Yep. You have no idea. So yeah. that's and that's exactly what I'm doing with this show and with what I'm what I need to start doing with social media because it's been a struggle, but that's what's coming. Yes, you need to start posting stuff. Yes, to give it more visibility because people talk about self care all the time, but nowhere, usually nowhere in the self care, do people focus on healing from loss. And yeah. I say loss because I don't want people to think that it's only death that you're grieving. Yeah. 
you know, so, so that's my platform. That is it. And that is, oh, you have no, that is so important. I tell you, cause I'm like, man, look how many people have lost people back to back to back. And, yeah. and you're like, you're not healing. You're just yep. moving forward with a smile on your face, hoping that yep. you don't crack. And that goes yeah. with relationships too. Yeah. That goes with relationships too. People who get out of one relationship and get right back into another. Yes. Back to the back. Process of healing. Yeah. You didn't even heal. You yep. didn't even you didn't even get to heal or anything. Yep. Like I remember when my mom passed, well, I didn't off of work for like six weeks. I was like, I mm, can't function. Yeah. I couldn't even function. My mental health was not from where it needed to be. I was not able to function. And I got back to work and I was like, okay, this is, I'm getting back into the norm. Yeah. But then it was like seeing funerals. I, oh, mm. I couldn't even watch a funeral for a while. I was yeah. like, oh. Right. I could watch movies right. about moms dying. I was like, "Oh Lord, get me out of here! Where is this? Uh, where's the door?" Yeah. I, it was a, it was a, it's a new life for me. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm like, I'm, I'm being re, like rehabilitated, basically. <laughs> that right. Is, uh, this life is that better for life. you? Is huh? it better for you now? Is it slowly getting better? Slowly, I yeah. it slowly gets better. I still have those moments where, you know, if a moment like that happens in a movie, I gotta take a breath. You know, I got to yeah. take a breath. I got to breathe. And I'm like, oh, I can't see this. I think where it really affects me is my acting because it's like, um, I have to play somebody who, you know, your mom finds out they just got cancer or your dad mm -hmm. finds out he got cancer. Mm -hmm. And like, mm -hmm. I, in my acting class, they were like, here are the roles that you guys can choose from. And all of them are like, this person has cancer. This person's mom has cancer. This person's yeah. dad has cancer. I was like, I was like, oh, it's too soon. I can't do this. It's and too soon. They're probably, that's probably intentional. I, yeah. I, there I say that's intentional because they probably know people have experienced some type of loss in their life where they can they can draw on that emotion. Yeah. That's it was what, for drama. They wanted yeah, you to, exactly. they wanted the drama to come out of you. Yeah. And I was like, you will get a little bit more than drama. Now I'm mad. Like, I don't want to do this. And I'm just like, no, I got to, I got to get over this pump. I got to get over this part. And it, it really was, it still is kind of holding me back from doing roles like that. But you see, mm -hmm. I'm in a breast cancer ad and you're supposed to look yeah. victorious and like you're still in good spirits. Yep. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was what I portrayed there. But what happens if they ever need me to switch it up? You know, so I really got to like, I, I my recovery, I'm still healing. I'm still healing yeah. from it. I'm still understanding what triggers me, makes me tick and how to get yeah. back to normal. Yep. After. Well, so, I applaud you for doing it because- oh, thank yeah, I applaud yeah. you. Thank you for this Thank platform. You. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for just making this platform available to everyone because you know there's a lot of us out here who are dealing with the same thing. Um, how do we push on after this? So you are doing a great thing, and I fully support you, and I will support you however you need Thank me you. to. If you need brand answers, whatever you need, sis, because we really need to put you out there some more because this is is so important. It's so difficult. It's such a difficult time. So thank you for what Thank you're you. doing. Thank, Thank you so you. much for that. I appreciate it. You're killing it, girl. You're doing amazing. I appreciate Thank you. Girl. And you're beautiful. All right. You're glowing. Oh, uh, my God. Listen, I had, I knew what you were going to look like when you got I, on here. I knew you were going to be beat. Look, I got to say, let me take the pearls off now. Look, I, I was like, let me pull the hair down. I I look like look, you look fabulous. That's what she came and slayed. She came too slayed. Thank oh you. my gosh. I'm so glad we did this. Thank you so much for yes. just having me on. It was just an honor. I'm back on whatever else you need to talk, whatever else you need to do this again. I'm here. Awesome. Thank you, you have a sister in me. Thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Well, All right, I will let you get back to your evening. Thank you so, so much. This was oh, great. Oh, thank yeah. you. Many blessings. Love you, thank sis. You. Back at you. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>